Uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, today uh, we want to talk about a Crino Edge stack and uh, requirements to the OpenStack uh, community. Uh, so thanks for coming in. And uh, I'm going to talk about uh, a Crino Edge stack and uh, the progress it has been made in the community. Then uh, these gentlemen will talk about the blueprints which are going to be supported in the Crino Edge stack. So when we when we talk about edge computing, every community is doing something with respect to the edge computing. And uh, with respect to that, what is Acrino is really trying to do with respect to edge computing? That's what this slide is going to talk about. And uh, when we look at the edge computing, there is a many layers to it. There is a platform where the application would run onto it. Then there is a API layer need to be supported. Then you know, like there is in the top like application need to be supported. When we collectively see all this thing, that's what we call as a use case, which actually drives some specific business case. And uh, Acrino is actually like taking a lot of car parts and compiling everything into a full working solution that can satisfy the use case. That is the key focus of the Acrino Edge Stack community. And when we look at all the open sources and uh, they are working on some part of the edge computing in the stack that we talked about. And, uh, but some community has to put together everything together so that it is useful from an end-to-end -end stack for a user. That is exactly what this community is focused on. So it takes like a lot of multiple open source software together, that including OpenStack, Kubernetes, and other, other components, that including the hardware that need to be supported at the edge. Because when we look at the hardware, there is a many type of hardware really need to be supported depending upon which edge location. Because edge could be in a cell tower, edge could be in a customer location like in a home, or it could, edge could be in a central office in a telco office. So depending upon where it is going to be deployed, the profile for that particular location will be different. So that is why we need a way to actually integrate everything together and test the solution from end to an integration perspective so that we can actually support that in production. So this community will focus on that integration part of everything together to drive a specific use case and it will develop a CI and CD infrastructure for it so that the production readiness of that end to end integration can be tested. This will also focus on the features and when we talk about the open sources, like it will bring all the open sources together actually in terms of uh, bringing this end to an edge stack. But if there are functionalities which, which is missing in that specific uh, open source component, this community will work with that specific uh, community in addressing the need. But if there is a component like a need to be addressed in an end-to-end -end level, and this community will develop that and support it as well. And you can see that the member of companies, like this is a list of companies so far have joined the Crino community. And uh, there's going to be more people actually in the pipeline and joining. And uh, this brings the, the user who's going to deploy this actually in the, um, in the cloud data center or in any edge location. And also it brings the people who is going to support the stack as from a vendor perspective. So in the combination of all this thing is what this community is working on and delivering so that uh, the, it is useful edge solution can be deployed at production. And this community is focusing on two key use cases at this moment. And you can actually see these use cases as uh, a umbrella of use cases. And it is focused on the carrier use cases. Uh, when I say carrier, you know, like you can think of a telecom. And the telecom has a multiple use cases in order to support the edge computing. And this community will focus on all those use cases. Either it is a deployment in a central location, or it's a customer location, or in a cell tower. So it will focus on all those requirements around it. And it will also focus on the enterprise and industry IoT use cases. Because it's very key that you know, the requirements are a little different when we look at the telecom versus like enterprise IoT uh, use cases. There, there is some commonality, but there's also differences need to be addressed in. So this community will actually focus on the sub-use cases in this major two categories. So this community uses a term terminology called a Crino blueprint, and it is very important to understand what is this blueprint. So you can think of like a blueprint as like an assembled car. So the car parts are like a different, different open source components. So the blueprint brings everything together in a such a way that you know, like it is a useful end-to-end -end solution which can be deployed in a production environment. So this is a real use case driven. 
and it is a fully integrated CI CD testing will be provided by the community. And uh, the community will also will look at the lifecycle support of all this component. Because you know, each community, open source community, will focus on the specific component that they are focused on. For example, if we take Kubernetes, OpenStack, an operating system, they focus on the lifecycle of that specific component. But this community will look at in a holistic picture for that use case, you know, like how do I support a whole lifecycle support for all the components and provide that CI CD infrastructure so that the whole component can be deployed in the production. And uh, this community is very uh, complementary to a lot of open source which are currently there. So that's why, you know, like if people ask like, okay, every community is doing edge computing work. It is really complementary because it is assembling all those factors together. And each community is supporting edge computing requirements within. It's also very important. For example, OpenStack supporting it, Airship supporting it, and Stalling X supporting it. Each community supporting the edge use cases within. It is also very important. So this com community is very complementary to the work which has actually been done in other communities. So it is not trying to duplicate the work. It is very complementary to the other communities. So this community come together and uh, and put together actually a structure in which these uh, projects are going to be assembled and supported with respect to the Crino. As I stated, you know, like the blueprint is very key for this community, the assembled uh, edge stack, that is what this community is focused on. In order to do that, uh, this community articulated, you know, how this is all coming together. So there's going to be a set of feature projects that this community will focus on. So I'll give you an example. For example, a blueprint need to be end-to-end -end tested. A blueprint need to be, you know, like end-to-end -to -end lifecycle managed. So those are like a feature project that is not addressed in other communities. That is something this community will address. And the integration, what we call as the blueprint, which actually brings everything together to support a particular use case. It will also will have a validation project. So that takes the blueprint and run it on a, the exact hardware that the user would run it in production so that the declarative configuration of that particular blueprint can be validated. And as I stated, this is very complementary to the other open source that including, you know, OpenStack and other, other projects. And uh, so we will have like a people from this community engaged in other communities so that, you know, like there is a mutual collaboration going on. And likewise, we expect the other communities to collaborate with Akraino as well so that there is a, a very, cohesive work that comes together to support the edge use cases. And uh, so the way we actually address like uh, different requirements with respect to the uh, use cases, because the use cases can have uh, sub use cases. And uh, so we collectively bring together in a form that we call as a blueprint family. So you can think of like a blueprint family is like, you know, collections of blueprint, they all come together and they share the same principle, tools, and it could actually use the same CI infrastructure. So that's what we call as a family. And within the family, you can have like a multiple blueprints. So for example, if I take a telco use case and uh, I want to deploy a, uh, a network cloud blueprint in a telco, and that particular blueprint can support like a 5G core, it can support like a RAN workloads, and other workloads as well, like a voice related stuff. So a blueprint could actually support multiple type of workload and multiple type of use cases as well. But we actually have a way to actually support a multiple innovation by having like use cases that can be supported using a multiple blueprints as well. So this community is really, you know, like bringing all the innovation together. The one key aspect that need to be noted compared to the other communities um, is that the architecture for the blueprint is actually very flexible in a way that it satisfies the use case. So we define the solution for the use case instead of, you know, like the solution is defined and then they are defined, you know, like they change the use case because most of the communities, they come bring the solution together. Then they will say that, okay, the use case is going to go look like that. But uh, this community is really, you know, like focusing on the use case itself so that the business needs can be achieved. So at and contributed the seed code, uh, one of the seed code for this community, and uh, that seed code is available in the Crino website. If you go to the Crino website, you can see the seed code. Uh, we call that as a network cloud blueprint. Again, this is a one of the blueprint that Crino will support, but there's other blueprints currently in development and currently being reviewed by the TSC that also will be supported. And within this blueprint, again, it is a telecom-focused uh, use case. 
and to support the 5G core and uh, voice related application. And in this blueprint, you know, like you can have like a single server install, multiple server install. And this blueprint is based on Airship. I'll talk about that in the next slide. And you guys can see this slide. This picture is also available in the Crino website. And uh, we pulled together actually this entire stack uh, using Airship. And as you all know that uh, Airship, uh, we talked about that in the morning keynote as well. It is an open stack foundation um, project. And it is used to actually deploy the, uh, the components of a cloud using a declarative way. And in this stack, you can see that Acrino brings like additional components as well to actually drive that into an integration, that including bringing like one app as a VNF orchestration and additional other components for operational uh, management. So that is the benefit of Acrino Blueprint is that it brings everything together to drive a specific deployment in. So this is additional blueprints that uh, we are actually working on and from uh, at and perspective, as I stated, there are many blueprint proposals. I would encourage you guys to go and look at the Acrino website where you can see all the different blueprints being proposed right now. And uh, we are working on a CBA blueprint, which is a software uh, SDN enabled broadband access. And this blueprint is a collaboration with the Open Networking Foundation. And this blueprint is to support the, the, the GPON access uh, related uh, workloads, and we're also working on serverless and real-time uh, blueprint. We also like to have a third-party blueprint where uh, like AWS, Azure, that get deployed into a location and have an interoperability between the blueprints that Acrino is defining. So we also like to bring those uh, innovation into the Acrino community. We're also looking at you know, customer premise for edge deployment as well from a network cloud uh, use case. And these are the sample of like other use cases and blueprints that this community is working on. But uh, the gentlemen here, uh, they want to talk like more, more about the other blueprints that they are actually working on. So with that, uh, Tapio. Okay. Hello. My name is Tapio Tankre, and I'm also a member of the Akraino TSC. So, uh, so the question was sort of why, why does Nokia participate uh, in Akraino, so I formulated this a little bit different, like why, why do we want to, uh, to, why you should participate in Akraino also. So the first benefit is that, that inside of a project like Akraino, open source project, you can collaborate with other companies. And it's also, I mean, which is obvious, other member companies, but it also allows you to, to collaborate with, uh, with upstream projects. And, and we actually have, from Previous projects, we have some experiences about that, that it's quite helpful if you have a sort of a group of people who have like a similar use case or same use case. They work together and sort of figure out what are the requirements. And then once they sort of internally know what they want, then they will uh, sort of go talk to the upstream community and say that this is actually what we want. These are the requirements. So this is how we would like to do it. And then uh, we have our own uh, cloud offering real time and, and sort of IT type of cloud offerings and sort of a collaborating with other companies. It's also, of course, helps uh, with the sort of improve those products. And this, an example is that the blueprint that I'm going to present with this airship that we, we take this sort of airship based network cloud blueprint and, and we add, add to it and, and sort of a uh, and, and that's something that sort of can also benefit in sort of our products. And then, of course, uh, allows to, to sort of work with other sort of related uh, blueprints with other community members. And then, sort of, we have another sort of a, uh, sort of interest is, is to sort of a, we are uh, launching this. Uh, Inside of the Open Compute Platform, we have the Open Edge hardware, and we want to sort of test that and, and run it as part of the, the inside of the Akrino Blueprint, and then also to, to sort of a, to create joint blueprints with with other community members. And the Akrino uh, Blueprints that we are actually planning at the moment that we that will be discussed in the TSC is this what we call the Open Edge Cloud. 
it's a it's a real time cloud. It's based on the, the network cloud blueprint. So it's it's uh, Kubernetes based. It's it's running OpenStack on top of Kubernetes. And what we want to add to that is is some real time functionalities, and also to be able to run that on the OCP Open Edge hardware. And then another one that we are uh, talking, <laughs> collaborating with ARM is what we call the micro mech or multi-axis edge computing. It's uh, the use case is, is a smart city. It's a platform for running applications on the ultra far edge. And so I, but this is sort of completely different. I mean, sort of the other extreme. It's a it's a single board ARM server with with possibly some kind of accelerators for machine learning or or things like that. And the idea in that is that it's it's an application platform which is container based and it will be open for third party uh, developers to develop uh, to develop their own applications. Okay. I'll let Martin go. So, uh, my name is Martin Beckstrom. I'm working with uh, cloud and virtualization technologies within Ericsson. Um, and I would like to start with um, just explaining a little bit on how we see on edge computing just in general. For us, the edge is basically two things. One is that we have a distribution of workloads that can happen in accordance with policies on, for instance, low latency. There could be other policies. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that the data center is particularly uh, small. Um, that's a little bit another problem, of course, associated with, with edge computing. So one of the problem is the distribution and to basically get a correct uh, allocation of workload in uh, relation to where the data is consumed. Um, that is one thing that we're working with. The other thing is then how we should be able to uh, build and maintain data centers that are very small. With small here we mean 10 compute blade or less. Um, and for this we believe that Airship is a very good solution. Uh, the reason is that the uh, possibilities to be without OpenShift, to be without hypervisor, is small for many applications that needs to be distributed, including our own applications such as virtualized RON and uh, parts of the packet core. Um, and OpenStack is not really scaling in small deployments. With the help of Airship, we can basically then slice up uh, the compute plate or the Linux plate in small portions and therefore deploy OpenStack in very, uh, with a very little overhead and therefore make uh, sites that even have 10 uh, compute plate or less economical viable. Um, we are therefore very interested in, in the Akrino development and, and I'm sitting in the Akrino board for, for Ericsson. And uh, out of this, um, meaning our interest for orchestration as one, one key area, we have basically said that we are interested very much in the different portions of Acrino that either is helping us to take care of the small scale problem um, or very much on the orchestration and the distribution of, of the software so we get the right, uh, the right allocation of software and workloads out in the network. Um, and to this, we have been able to, to so far, um, actually change a bit our product plans to take care of Airship and also um, do lab and prototyping and we intend to be active in the upstreaming of both Airship and other parts of Akrino. Thank you very much. My name is uh, Sukhdev Kapoor. I'm a distinguished engineer at uh, Juniper Networks. I am uh, a TSC member for Akrino as well as for Tungsten Fabric. So here I'm uh, here to talk about the integration of tungsten fabric, which is also 
Linux Foundation based product to bring tungsten fabric and acrino uh, together as a joint integration. So we are also working with the same foundation, which is a, a network cloud blueprint. And what we are looking at is how can we integrate tungsten fabric into it. So our uh, goal is to replace uh, it, it. Somehow there is an issue with the animation, but this box uh, should span a uh, few more uh, few more boxes. But regardless, uh, what we are doing is we are taking, so like the way Ericsson uh, gentleman mentioned, so for the tungsten fabric, what we are trying to do is similarly replace certain components in the blueprint and bring uh, a tungsten fabric into it. And this is what uh, Katan mentioned earlier also. That's what uh, Akreno blueprints are all about that you can bring in different orchestration systems, you can bring in different technologies within the same blueprint family. So, so that's basically what, uh, uh, what we're trying to achieve. And uh, how we do is, uh, uh, our model is that we have a original controller node and then we have edge site. Okay? And, and Within the network cloud blueprint, we are using Airship Armada to instantiate tungsten fabric helm charts. So tungsten fabric itself today can be deployed by using helm charts. And, and we are just integrating these pieces together so that uh, Airship instead of installing other components which are part of uh, uh, NC Blueprint, it can install uh, tungsten fabric. In fact, we already have uh, basic demos uh, working with this. And, and what that does is uh, tungsten fabric is replacing Calico as a CNI into the Kubernetes, as well as it's replacing, uh, uh, it's bringing in as a, uh, a networking layer for OpenStack. So therefore, uh, what it does is it gives a single SDN uh, solution within Acreno where it can work with both orchestrators, uh, Kubernetes as its uh, CNI, for its CNI, as well as OpenStack Neutron for its networking. So thereby, uh, you, we can orchestrate the, the, the pods, virtual machines, uh, one thing which I don't show here is uh, 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 tungsten fabric can also orchestrate bare metal servers. So therefore, in, in, in the edge sites, edge pops, we can uh, orchestrate all kinds of workloads and, and seamlessly bring them all together. One of the biggest benefit of this integration is the middle box where, where it talks about the networking features. So that's one of the biggest strength of tungsten fabric is that it provides a very, very feature-rich uh, advanced networking. And what this integration does for the users, the customers, the, uh, the providers is they get to take benefit of all of these features as a part of the Acreno integration. So that's the biggest benefit of this integration. And uh, overall, you know, the, the aid looks like you have, a, you have an orchestration and monitoring system where you have a full monitoring capability of all remote, uh, remote sites, and it's fully secure end-to-end. -end. Uh, you know, it, we can have full IPsec uh, level security between the sites. The site can be very simple, very, very thin uh, edge site, or it can be a very elaborate uh, uh, remote site. So the smallest footprint we can support is single core, eight gig memory requirement. That's it. That's the that's the smallest footprint, and the largest you can have a full blown uh, racks of hardware, and, and and we can orchestrate uh, all of that through this integration. 
So that that's what really uh, the tungsten fabric and uh, crano integration brings. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Jim. Hello, my name is Jim Enerson. I work at uh, Wind River, and I fully realize that I'm probably standing in between you and some uh, refreshing beers. <laughs> so I'll respect that and I, uh, by being brief, and uh, I appreciate you hanging in there. I'm here to talk about uh, Starling X. <clears throat> First thing I want to start with is what is the relationship between Starling X and Acrano, because that question seems to come up, especially uh, today for some reason. So the first thing is uh, Starling X is a hardened uh, um, cloud infrastructure, fully integrated, and it is indeed deployable standalone. Some companies will choose to do that, to, uh, to productize and, and deploy it standalone. I'll tell you, without a shadow of a doubt, our day one intention, and I was there on day one when we created Starling X, was it would be uh, uh, a fundamental component of uh, that we would contribute into a uh, crano, and to uh, we would do that to address uh, certain blueprints that we felt uh, you know are essential to the you know the crano uh, crano uh, mission statement, and uh, ones that uh, Starling X is optimized to address. So I see there's no conflict at all in between uh, Starling X and and uh, a crano. I see uh, Starling X as a as an essential component of a crano. So why, why did we want to do that? Well, we, we want to contribute to a strong ecosystem so that we can collaborate. You've heard the other uh, colleagues of mine here talk about building this strong ecosystem and addressing uh, the critical use cases for the, uh, you know, the telecom and industry, and that's, that's exactly where we want to be. We want to drive towards standardized APIs, standardized models, standardized uh, requirements, and you know, starting X, we cannot do that on our own. We need a, a broader community with uh, with uh, broader inputs to it. So the outputs will be critical bl blueprints that we will define that you know integrate Starling X into you know the Acrano lineup and address these uh, critical use cases. So the blueprint that we want to lead off with that we're working on right now is a, we call it a far edge distributed cloud blueprint. And we see this is very, uh, very essential for addressing uh, use cases of, of geographically dispersed uh, high density uh, locations, be it in, in factories or stadiums or, uh, you know, um, um, VRAN applications. These are characterized by um, scalable footprint, but uh, going down to very small physical footprint, and the assumption has to be low physical security constraints. So we, we proposed this, um, this blueprint using Starling X, where we would have a, a distributed far edge cloud. It's essential to have a central uh, presence because for um, uh, if operational efficiency, you want to be able to control, you patch, um, manage, monitor all, all sites centrally. But uh, you need actually a local control as well because you need to be uh, provi providing a level of autonomy in case there's uh, communication breakdowns or uh, loss of connectivity, these kind of things. You don't want the services to be disrupted, you want local autonomy. And uh, that's exactly what we see as the essence of this distributed far edge uh, cloud blueprint. So the edge sites themselves, they'll be uh, scalable from as small as one single server up to hundreds or thousands of servers and uh, all connected together into a central uh, agency to do the monitoring, management and, uh, and uh, deployments according to, again, the, uh, the Acrano, uh, the Acrano uh, requirements. In the uh, local uh, local sites, we provided a you know a lightweight control, which has essential local functions, which uh, will interoperate with the uh, you know the, the central cloud control functions, but uh, also provide the autonomy that you need so that you can survive these these kinds of outages. The last thing I'm going to show you is our common uh, software stack. I'm not going to go through this thing because it's been shown a couple of times already today, but uh, it's certainly on the Acrano site. If you want to go and look through the blueprint proposal, you'll, you'll find it there. 
but uh, we're aligning with the, uh, you know, the uh, Acreno uh, principles that uh, Canon has already laid down, that uh, zero touch provisioning, containers, MVMs, both supported. And for us, it's a small infrastructure footprint, you know, for this uh, distributed cloud uh, edge sites. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. We still have a few slides. <laughs> so, so what is up to the Akrino and the OpenStack community collaboration really need to happen? And as I mentioned, the Akrino community is very complementary to what, what has been uh, going on from an edge computing effort in OpenStack, as well as the OpenStack hosted project, uh, like Airship, Starling X. And uh, thank you to the OpenStack Edge community working group, and they have been working on enhancing the OpenStack to support the, some of the Edge use cases as well. As I stated, it's a, one of the components within the blueprint currently being used uh, in the Akrino. And that work should continue, and the Akrino community will bring additional requirements to the Edge working group. And as I stated, as again, it is complementary because uh, there's a lot of use case discussion currently going on in the Crino community that will be fed back into the, the edge working group within the OpenStack community to collaborate. And uh, a continued collaboration between the OpenStack uh, community and the uh, Linux Foundation, the Crino community is very critical uh, in order to success uh, in the edge computing in overall. So that's why we call this community as a complementary work. And, uh, we have like uh, two, three minutes, and uh, if anybody has any question for this gentleman, or for me, actually, we can uh, take it up. Anybody has any question? All right, then, uh, I think it's uh, late, <laughs> late evening. I, we all understand that. Uh, th uh, thank you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, appreciate it.